and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Gruul Guardian. Sorry, we were building a deck around Golden Guardian today for our Throwback Thursday stream, Wednesday edition. Um, I love the Throwback Thursday streams. What this is, is whenever we take rares and mythics that are rotating out of standard here next week whenever rotation happens and building decks around them. Um, and specifically cards that just haven't really seen very much standard play at all. We've had so many fun brews and everything. And with tomorrow being the last Thursday, there's just more cards I want to build around. So we're doing it today and tomorrow as well. Uh, we just got done with a Boneyard Parlay deck that went pretty well. And later on, we're going to have a Journey to Eternity deck as well. But for now, we're building around Golden Guardian. This card right here. So 4 mana, 4-4 four, four Defender. And you can pay two, and then Golden Guardian fights another target creature you control. Um, when Golden Guardian dies this turn, return it to the battlefield transformed under your control. And then Gold Forge Garrison is an incredible land. You can tap it and add two mana of any color. That's pretty incredible. Um, or you can also pay for and tap it and create a 4-4 four, four colorless golem artifact creature token. Um, and they're not legendary, so you can have multiple of them in play. Uh, so you can use, like, one to add two mana to help for another one. But I guess this is, like, they have, like, the one Guardian there, and then that's like, defending, and then um, defending something, like a city, I guess, or something. And then whatever comes down and strikes down the, the Guardian. And then you're like, all right, well, that one Guardian wasn't enough. We need reinforcements. And so then there's a bunch of reinforcements on the way, I guess. Anyway, um, so yeah, so a couple things about it is, you know, you do have to fight another creature you control, right? You, like, like, you have to have a creature to fight there, and then you have to have the Golden Guardian die, so um, it doesn't, it just has to die this turn, right? So I I think you can, like, fight, like, if there's, if they play, like, a Kaya's Wrath, you can, like, fight a Llanowar Elf and kill a Llanowar Elf, and then then they Kaya's Wrath it, and then it comes back. I feel like that's going to be how that works there. Um, but, yeah, so when I was thinking about what to do with Golden Guardian, I was like, well, we need we need creatures big enough to fight and kill our Golden Guardians. And I was like, well, the thing, you know, going through, thinking about, like, what to do with it, and I feel felt like, oh, wow, Ripjaw Raptor is, like, the best possible creature here. Because, you know, you fight Ripjaw Raptor, you get the Enrage, you get to draw a card. I had four Ripjaw, four Golden Guardian originally, and those were the very last two cards that I cut. I was at 62, and I, I couldn't really figure out what I wanted to cut, and so I went down to three and three with Ripjaw and Golden Guardians here. Anyway, so besides that, so I was like, all right, that's a good one to, to, to cut, or that's a good one to uh, fight there. And then I was like, well, it's also a four-power creature, and it makes more four-power creatures, and what really cares about four-power creatures is Kiora. So I was like, well, Kiora could get us a lot of uh, card advantage here also. And so, you know, each each time you create a 4-4, draw a card kind of thing. I was like, that sounds like really cool. So I knew I was going to be green. I knew I wanted to do Kiora, Ripjaw, Golden Guardian. And then from there, uh, you know, I thought about going, like, white, where you could have um, Oketra in the deck also that could make 4-4s um, four as well. But those aren't really that great of 4-4s four to fight with Golden Guardian. Um, you know, black gives you some some really good big creatures as well that are good to fight like doom whisper or um the black cavalier you know that has lifelink that's a good thing to fight also so thought about going green black um but decided to go green red because we got ilharg and ilharg is really cool we also you know ravager worm like these are some some good creatures to fight rekindling phoenix is a pretty nice one to fight also where um you can you know on your opponent's end step you can just like fight your rekindling because you know you don't have to do this sorcery speed. You can do this instant speed. So you can like wait till their end step, then fight your rekindling phoenix like after they tap out, and you kill your own phoenix. But then it comes back, and of course that's that gives you more Kiora triggers also. Like phoenix, whenever it dies, comes back. Um, uh, you get more Kiora triggers. So yeah, so we went Gruel. This looks like this could be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, let's hope let's get a Gold Forge Garrison. So, you know, like we have our different goals. That's our goal here, get a gold a gold forge garrison in play. Sideboard's pretty basic. Here we go. Gruel Guardian. All right, we're going to play through a league. See if we can get to five wins. 
before two losses. Anyway, back to the chat. What's up, QQ? Team Hyperion. Hey, everybody. What about the tap golem that puts 1-1 one, one on golems? Okay, so, th yeah, the okay, you're talking about, like, the two-mana artifacts. Steel Overseer that taps and puts a counter on all, all your artifacts. Basically, if, if we already have, like, a bunch of artifacts in play, we're probably doing good. And there's going to be a lot of times where the Steel Overseer is kind of like a two-mana 1-1 one, one that slowly grows itself. I don't think it's better than just playing a bunch of four-power creatures. Basically, we're like a Kiora deck with just tons of four-power creatures to go with Kiora, get that card advantage there. And then uh, we also have this cool Golden Guardian card as well. I... Okay, so I'm not... All right, so it, it has to die that turn. How it's worded... I've actually never seen Golden Guardian in play ever. <laughs> but how it's worded is it says, I don't think it has to die specifically just in that fight. Because it, you know, it says that when it, when it would, you know, it fights, and then when it would die this turn. So I think that you can have it fight, and then have it die later on in the turn, and it would I know my trigger still, I think. No, I am not making this up as I go. Don't mind if I take my octopus for a walk. Hmm. Well, that didn't pan out. Let's get moving. I really thought about just not even casting the Llanowar Elf here. I want to get the Kiora in play to be able to start drawing cards. But I could see them having like Deafening Clarion. This also makes the them able to target the Paradise Druid. I could have just untapped a land and played Land Off and then not and not attacked Teferi, but I think attacking Teferi is worth it. Okay, it does work the way I'm explaining. Okay. So if you have it in play with other creatures and they cast a, a Kaya's Wrath, you can fight a small creature and then the Kaya's Wrath resolves and then it, then your creature dies. Okay, so it can die any time after the fight. That's more like it. Because this is fine. We don't really need the, the Paradise Druid in play too much here. Nature flows Ilharg. Vigor. People don't play very many counter spells. I could I guess I could have like played it more safe and gone Domri and then they can't counter. But then I would have only had three mana. Then we would have played, like, Spellbreaker. Yeah, but that's boring. That's true. So, instead of boring, we're we're boring our opponent. Right, we're, we're going to bore. Yeah, you, you understand what I'm saying. Think our opponents playing Settle the Wreckage. They're playing Chemistry's Insight. Duels are for Poshnobs. Let's just fight. The deck deck list command is not updated. I meant it. I honestly meant to tick up Domri to cast that.
All right, hopefully deckless command works now. Yeah, so I know Settle doesn't work with Spellbreaker. So I definitely want to get Spellbreaker in play. What's that? Something smells rotten. Wait, that might be me. Alright, got to attack with Ilharg. Correct, yes, I, I could have, yeah. I need to add mana with Domri to play around Counterspell. The Spellbreaker didn't do that. You cannot get rid of Ilharg. Can never get rid of the Ilharg. Bustin' eggs is my bread and butter. Do you know what my bread and butter is? Bread and butter. It is. They got lots of cards over there. These counselors insights. Ilharg's return counts as back bacon. <laughs> so they have they have dive down here. No dive down. So I guess I should have gone with the ambush because then that I guess that ambush would play around dive. No, it doesn't play around dive down. It doesn't target. I was thinking like the three extra toughness. Uh, they could be in full control. I don't know. Maybe they don't have that great of an internet connection or something. Cream cheese? Is that is that a saying? Something is the cream cheese. All right, so just got control. Um, want to play Ceratops Vivian? Domri's Ambush, Domri, Ripjaw, Golden Guardian. May not be the best of cards. I, I just don't think they really have counter spells. I 
going to take out a Ronus, take out a Ripjaw, take out a Druid of the... an Ambush and a Druid of the Cowl. Must be at least 60 cards. Fair enough, fair enough. All right, Druid of the Cowl back in. All right, let's get Golden Guardian. Every time I start saying that, I think I'm talking about, like, Golden Chick or something. That chicken restaurant. Here we go. We got our Defender. <laughs> Why are Ilharg and Ravager Worm so great? Discuss. Because they're really big. And they have really good animations. And they're fun to play. What's up, Hank? Thanks so much there. Um, I think I may be doing the set review maybe Friday. Are we? Do we know for sure that we'll that we'll know the entire set on Friday? Is that a thing? Okay, we do we do know we'll we'll know the entire set on Friday. Okay, so then yeah, so actually we're probably going to be doing the full set review on Friday then. So I think it's better to be able to, uh, like, have this at, like, six mana where you can play it and then fight immediately. Yeah, it's true. Maybe we just do it... Maybe we do it Saturday? I don't... I don't exactly know. I'll have to think about it. I was not, like, we we're planning on doing the sub battle Saturday. Maybe we do Sunday set review. No. Makiora. Okay, so it's good to know that we'll have it all done by Friday. I'll, I'll think about it. You know, I'll definitely have, like, the announcement about it and everything, too, though. Wow. They're killing my Golden Guardian. It's rough.
Yeah, so it gets exiled. Lava Coil exiles it, so it doesn't. It won't die, so fighting doesn't doesn't really matter. I know my responsibility. Hold that thought. I really hope they don't have another counter spell. Okay, that's good. Beasts are sometimes rest not bad for a mouse. Hey, it all worked. No counter spell. It worked. Now Vivian can tick up and find another Golden Guardian and we can play it and fight the Ripjaw Raptor and flip it. And then we can start churning out 4-4s. Four Y'all know how good like Legion's, Legion's landing is good I against control? How you make wins. a 1-1 every turn at their end step? Well, I imagine don't. if that 1-1 one, one was a 4-4. Four, four. I have just the trick for this. Yeah, for a donation deck, I... Uh, you just have to upload it to a third-party site. Yeah, you can copy paste it from Arena if if, uh, if you have it on Arena, for example. Here's a good link there that will work. Yeah, so just but you know whatever any deckless site will do. All right, Golden Guardian. The wilds are my shield. We did it! Well, we haven't done it yet. Alright. Now we play it. No counter spell. Alright, now we fight. Wow. Alright, now Golden Guardian dies. Gold Forge Garrison. Look at how cool that looks. Okay. Now, um, we don't have the man to, to add a, to make a 4-4 this turn. We're going to have this thing attack Narset. Interesting technique. Uh, yeah, Demir Mill has a lot of good stuff. I haven't thought too much about the archetype Demir Mill after um, after rotation, but they do have a lot of good good cards. Keep an open mind. No, I, I didn't want to attack Narset first because of Seal Away, right? So. We knew that they were gonna. I didn't want to attack with the Riptar Raptor because of Seal Away there. I kind of want them just to keep their Seal Away mana up. Mind and body should move in unison. Gold Forge Garrison. So we get to pay four and tap it and make a four four. We can make a bunch of four fours. Every turn, four four. No one knows the wilds like I do. Mm. So one, two, three, four. Patience. I must stay focused. Uh, 
Golem time. The factory is online. I've seen things that would break someone like you. <laughs> Ponage Factory here in chat says, I am, in fact, online. I guess I just have lethal. All right, I could have had lethal. Right, like... Would two seal aways, if I would have just played Hellkite Haste, Spellbreaker Haste, so we, we know that we couldn't get settled, um, and then attack out, they had seal away for Ripjaw, seal away for Hellkite, they were only taking nine, so no, so if they had double seal away. <laughs> Wait, you can't handle a land that, that pumps out four fours every turn? All right, we did it. First match, we did it. Cross another thing off the bucket list. We had Boneyard Parlays last league, and now we get to have the... What is the land called? The Gold Forge Garrison. We had Gold Forge Garrison in play. Yeah, pack rat. I'd say pack rat was kind of fair. <laughs> opponent rage adding star of extinction. Oh, I didn't think of star of extinction. What if my opponent would have played star of extinction? That would have been so mean, and blown up my my factory. That would have been so mean. All right, want to draw this land, hopefully. I was hoping that was like Mortify as a removal spell, not Legion's End. Because I, I made that block because then, you know, if it was like Mortify, they don't get to like Mortify these things. Jump. <laughs> There's no lands. Where are those lands at? Oh, 
Well, that looks to be a really good turn. I'll be back after I've licked my wounds. You'll see. Never been hugged by a kraken before. The ocean surges, life thrives. Still looking for those lands. While our opponent just gets to draw millions of cards, the champion of dusk. We put up a fight for not having any mana. They had eight lands in play. We had three. So we saw there, like, you know, their game plan to get, like, my creatures are bigger. Their only way to get through is using black removal spells. Veil of Summer just counters all those and draw, and draw a card. It's just such a good value for us. But the problem, you know, with bringing in eight spells, if we bring in Lava Coils and Veil of Summers, is that's going to be, like, a lot of creatures that we have to cut. Um, so, therefore, I think we cut a couple Kiora. We'll get rid of this Druid of the Cowl. Um, maybe get rid of one more mana creature. Theoret theoretically, the game should be going longer here. Them, they're going to be bringing in removal. I'm bringing in a lot of removal. So we should have time to get to, like, Ravage or Worm and stuff. Also with longer game having card advantage is important so having like these kioras is important ronus does have death touch meaning it trades incredibly well um Some Paradise Druids. I don't have anything else to take out. I'm going to have to cut something. I guess I'm just going to play three Lava Coil and three Veil of Summer. I can't. I just can't play, you know, really low number of creatures. i got to play a lot of creatures still. Hey, what's up, Rad? There we go. Thank you so much for that donation deck there. Do you have uh, a specific day or time you'd really like me to play the deck there, Rad? This hand's really bad. Maybe Domri is actually the card I should take out. Should take out to have Lava Coil, because like, like I can't even keep Domri here because they just I play Domri, they just attack and kill Domri. So it's either get rid of a land or get rid of a Domri. This is just a really bad hand. All right, hopefully we draw. Hopefully we draw like we did last game. Okay. 
No problem, Ren. No problem. Uh, I'm sure it'll be good. Well, my hand is pretty garbage. It looks like our opponent's hand. Not so much. Looks like it's looking very good. All right, Paradise Druid is a good draw. Um, I'd really like a four mana creature this next turn. You know, like Ripjaw Raptor, Golden Guardian, Rekindling Phoenix. Okay. That'll do. Because I don't want to play Hellkite without uh, Veil of Summer protection. So ambush was a good draw. They're probably just loaded up on removal spells right now. But they could have a bunch of Noxious Grasps. Really wish we had one more mana. Really wish I could have, I could activate Hellkite and have Veil of Summer. This turn went really well for me. That went really well for me. Wow. That was about as good as that could go. They need to activate. But now I get to try to kill it. So then they have to activate it again. They want to keep it alive. And that just taps them out. So now the Hellkite's going to kill them. Mm. I guess I had to draw one land to officially kill them. We'll make them chump lock. And then I'll just play land or off to chump lock this night. Paul. Okay, good to know. Good to know there, Red. Sorry, I just saw your message there about the sideboard. 
Would you rather would you rather me play Rad, would you rather me play the deck in best of one? Cause I can do that as well if it's a best of one deck. Or if you're looking to turn it into a best of three deck, of course I can play it there too. So basically whatever whatever you want there. So maybe we cut the Dom Rays and play a Paradise Druid Veil of Summer. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Still 17 big creatures. Can we make that sick? Can we take out a big creature, play another Kiora? No, probably shouldn't. All right, here we go. Hey, Welsh Dragon, Intruder. Welcome, everybody. It's a risky one here. If they kill Lanor Elf, I'm in a lot of trouble. care about Kiora. was good. I would like to keep hitting land drops. <clears throat> That's not so good. So I know I could have gone Ravager Worm, Eat the Night, but if they have... The problem with that is if they had Noxious Grasp and they just killed the Ravager Worm in response, that would have been really bad for me. So I'm going with the Hellkite where I can still keep up Veil. But I know... Uh, my best case scenario last turn was Ravager Worm. Yeah, Ravager Worm is such a cool card, and that animation is just incredible as well. So this does mean I'm chump blocking with Ravager Worm, but that's fine, because then we get to Ilharg plus Lava Coil. All the cards that Kiora has drawn us. 
Like, it's... That's perfectly fine. I guess I I really should have just untapped Hellkite. Alright, yeah, like, I should just untap Hellkite. I'm just kind of used to untapping the Atlanta Elf, but there we go. Gruel control, yeah. That it felt like there. I mean, they could have killed... They could have attacked Kiora and killed Kiora. They didn't do it. Didn't have any respect for Kiora, and Kiora just drew us millions of, millions of cards. Kiora MVP. And it was an extra mana every turn. Alright, so we're 2-0. and oh. Alright, all we have to do is draw our four power creatures. We have... 18 four power creatures. That was not one of our four power creatures, though. Krakens, Leviathans, one draw. Ripples and so we got 18. Grass. 18 good draws here. Wow, you would. Alright, there we go. Got one. No! Wow, what a turn for our opponent. What a two turns. The Legion's End for the Llanowar Elves to not let me play the Ilharg and then Bedevil for Kiora. Alright, maybe we draw Ravager Worm? Nope. Did I even kill that thing? Like, what if they play Lyra Dawnbringer next turn? Like, wouldn't I much rather kill Lyra Dawnbringer? Nah. So allows us to attack for a bunch here. need basically any creature <laughs> like actual just any creature because of the trample damage like any creature at all it's unreal Do we have Legion's End for Seraph of the Scales in here? Just another land. Our last game we lost is because we couldn't find any lands at all. You know, we kept like three, la or we kept two lands and we drew one, but then it was just all spells. And now our next game that we lose, we just have nine lands.
So, I mean, Coil's really good against Seraph, but not necessarily that great against a lot of their things. I was thinking like Vivian would take out one of their creatures. Hmm. Yeah, our opponent's definitely a Kalia deck. Absolutely. I guess it's just it really isn't a Golden Guardian matchup with them just being in the air. I, mean, I really like Golden Guardian, of course, and it's the point of our deck, but this is not really necessary. They played, uh... but yeah, like Resplendent Angel also. Yeah, Co so Coil will get rid of Seraph, which, you know, they had three of. Like, that's that's a hard card to get through also. But then also uh, Kalio, Resplendent Angel. Like, Resplendent Angel is a really important card to kill as well. Hey, Damiel. So yeah, I could have played Ripjaw Raptor, but I want to be able to have Ripjaw plus Veil or Vivian Reed plus Veil. Pragma! Comes. Thanks to the Twitch Prime sub. I appreciate that. Our fifth sub of the day. You can't stop nature. And Moses as well. Thank you so much there, Moses. Our six of the day. All right, so we got to do our thing that time. That's for sure. Sixteen big creatures still. We're running back. Yeah, the the MTG bot storm count hasn't reset in like a week. So yes. So that's why it's off.
That's a good one. Well, I'm kind of glad they use that instead of Legion's End so they don't get to see the hand. So they don't get to know like how important having a Spellbreaker around is. But of course with them having Bedeck with the minus three, that does make me not want to, or does make me want to give the counter there to Spellbreaker. I love how Spellbreaker has Hexproof. Hey, what's up, Yod? We are having fun having uh, some really awesome decks here. Oh, I forgot to. Oh, yeah, I haven't uploaded the Soul Type Parlay yet. Remind me there. All right, because I haven't, I haven't clicked the finish uploading because I didn't get the. There it is, the thumbnail. Thank you for doing that, as always, Yod. So they Soren went and got one of those things back. All right, get this thumbnail. And there we go. All right, upload. Okay, so we just, that's eight trample right now. So this will, oh, well, let's see, they get four. So that's nine trample. So they have to chump block out. The four basic mountains. Hey, Sir Jax. Four basic mount mountains is a little awkward here with this. Ceratops is trying to be all shifty. So glad no Dawnbringer. GG's. All right, Gruel Guardian, three and zero. Oh. Yeah, we're doing Throwback Thursday, Wednesday edition today. Because it's just so much fun building decks around these rares and mythics before they rotate out. Because they're about to, so we're gonna have we're gonna throw back Thursday tomorrow as well. But we're only doing two decks because we got two donation decks to do as well. Um, and then we'll kind of see how this this whole weekend kind of plans out. Um, I'm gonna think about it after stream and, and tomorrow of like when we're gonna do the set review and. Um, I think we're going to be doing sub-battle Saturday this weekend and just how everything's going to work out. Um, yeah, I, I used to play Modern all the time. I don't anymore. Uh, my favorite deck was Green-White Company. I lovingly called Green-White Value Town. 
Also, well, Drazi Tron, those are my two decks. You think I'm crazy? Oh, have at it, boys. Yeah, d I mean, Domri 4 is, is good. It's a good card. It's not too slow for the deck or anything. I just couldn't really fit it in with wanting uh, um, like the Kioras, because the Kioras trigger off all the, the creatures and everything. You think I'm just gonna let you pace me? Oh, I wish you could see your face while I'm beating you. Yeah, yeah, there does look to be a lot of good things with to brew with, with Throne of Eldraine. And that's that's what we that's what we talk about with our set review. It's gonna be a where we, we talk about it's like a it's like a brewer's guide. To the set. Ooh, that smart it does. No, I don't think I've talked about Fabled pas Passage at all. There we go. Thanks, Yud. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, Hardened Skills. That's a that's a tough that's a that's a tough deck to play. There's a lot of um, tricky lines there. So if I just play, I mean, I could either just play Ronus and attack for four, or I could just play Ravager Worm as like a five, six haste, but we don't get to eat anything. I think I just play Ronus. They can only punish you if they catch you. <laughs> Yeah, now we get to eat. Oh, have at it, boys. Get to eat the devil here. Let's go haste. Chomp. That's such a that's such an awesome animation. Get a good thirteen in there. Chomp, chomp, chomp. All right, so this looks like a coil matchup. Certainly. Um, going to take out basically the cards that want us there. Take out, definitely want to take out a Druid and one Domri. Now the other two cards. Guess we can maybe take out one Kiora. And then I feel like all these big creatures are good. It's like what my opponent's doing. Maybe an Ilharg, maybe? No. Maybe just the other Domri. Nah, Domri's pretty good. Probably a five or a six drop. I guess Ronus. Ronus is cool too, though. All right, we're just cutting the cards that want us that game. Maybe I'm supposed to take out Phoenix with their ability to do like ping damage. 
Do you think two color decks will be more favored than three color ones after the rotation because of no buddy lands? Somewhat, I think in, in some color combinations, I think there are like the three color combinations that are the cons that are like Sultai, Abzan, Mardu, uh, Jeskai, and the last one. Anyway, those those color combinations, like they still have two pairs of temples to work out just fine. Happy birthday, Kurtash. Congratulations for another travel around the sun there. Yeah, happy birthday. Teamer. Teamer was the other one. Go get him, buddies. Pretty awkward drawing all these mountains. We have seven mountains, nine forests, and then our eight duels. Hope they're holding their noxious grasp over there that doesn't kill my Ilharg. So is Fabled Passage good enough for three color decks that aren't Khan's colors? Um, oh yeah, I think somebody else was asking about Fabled Passage just a little bit ago, right? I forgot, that's what I was doing. I was going over to Mythic Spoiler to see what, what's Fabled pas Passage. I don't have the exact card names, you know, down perfectly yet. Fabled Passage. I can't... Uh, let's see, I'm not Fire seeing this card. It's probably not a common. Let's scroll down here. Maybe it's down here somewhere. I don't see it. Someone in chat tell me what it does. Um, so the problem with going Domri's Ambush Ilharg tonight here is they could have removal spell for Ilharg in response. It's not super likely, but that could be a thing. So actually, I'm going to just play the Spellbreaker. Give it a counter. Because now they Spellbreaker has Hexproof. So that will kill Knight. Fabled Passage is a land. Okay, this land. Tap, sack, Fabled Passage. Search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. Then if you control four or more lands, untap that land. Uh, I don't... I mean, I guess I could see some play in uh, in three color decks. I don't expect it to like it's it's obviously better than evolving wilds, but really not that much better. I don't know if I would even put that in a, 
I mean, it depends on like what the man the rest of the mana base looks like. I don't expect that to to really have a huge impact on standard. Um, especially because you know you're just getting so you you do have to play a lot of basics to play that card. You don't really love having basics in the four color deck. Wait, can we attack with a defender? Or are we about to do something crazy? We're attacking with the defender. How about that? All right, I guess I should not have attacked the land or elf because then we would have had we would have been able to have the four mana up. We got to attack with the defender though. That was cool. That's pretty busted. Attacking with defenders. Are you kidding me? Uh, we can't play Domri and make a golem. I'm definitely making golems. No, let me make a golem. I should have just made a golem. No, I should have just made it during my turn. Then we're playing a sweeper anyway. All right, Gruel Guardian, four no. Yeah, I know you have to only control four more lands. It's, it's you fetch for basics though. That, that's what I'm saying. You have to put basics in your deck to be able to fetch. Like, let's say you want to play four of that card. That means you have to have at least four basics and you're probably going to draw other basics. Then you'd have to play like six or seven basics because you'll probably just draw some and you don't want the card just to be dead. And I don't think you want to play a three-color deck with a, that many basics in it, so that's why I don't think you really want to play that card. I don't. I wouldn't want to put that many basics in my three-color deck. All right, final boss time. Oh, yeah, great for yeah, great and limited for sure. If you want to have like three or four basics and play one of those things, that's reasonable. Wow, what a draw step. No more Spitfires, please. That card's really scary. Yes. That's what I like to see, War Boss. War Boss makes a 1-1 that has to attack. And I'm about to play this Ripjaw Raptor and tell them, go ahead and attack. Go ahead. Come on, the water's warm. Jump on in. Don't be shy. Dun, dun, 
Fight. Unfortunately, it's just two mana of the same color. Can't do like two different colors, so we can't ambush right there. All right, they finally wanted to not make more creatures with War Boss. <laughs> yeah, isn't that a sweet combo? Now we got the Gold Forge Garrison over here. All right, so if we activate Gold Forge Garrison to make a, a Golem, that means we have three other mana available to us. Um, so Scorch Spitter attacks for three. Oh, oh, no, 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 are you kidding me? No, why would they tap my Gold Forge Garrison? No. I'm so sad. Well, I guess we might as well just play more of these things then. No, I went ahead and blocked the war boss. I know that they're not forced to attack anymore, but but they are doing two damage to me each turn with cavalcade. And I don't want to take two more damage. I don't know why they attacked with the two two. That didn't make a lot of sense. Ah, I was gonna be able to have a double gold forge garrison. Oh, that was gonna be a first. We were gonna have two of those out. If our opponent didn't just concede so fast. They're not legendary. All right, we're, we need to coil stuff. Coils are in. Um, two Kiors are out. One of the five drops is out. Either Ilharg or Ronis. I mean, Ronis giving your creatures vigilance is like cool too. All right, I guess it's Ronis though. I don't think I want to play Vivian to destroy the enchantment. It just costs so much mana. I'm gonna just try to kill the creatures and like kill them first before we die. Golden Guardian, what a cool card. It's been a good day. With Checked a couple of things off the standard bucket bucket list with Boneyard Parlay and now flipping Golden Guardian, getting the, the Gold Forge Garrison. Yeah, it's Throwback Thursday today. Wednesday edition of Throwback Thursday. We'll have two more decks tomorrow. I know I'm going to be doing an Invocation deck with Sunbird's Invocation and Vivian's Invocation. I'm putting those in a deck together. Probably going to go Teamer to get Agent of Treachery in there too, where if you have like Sunbird's Invocation in play, and then you cast Vivian's Invocation, Vivian's Invocation is like, look at you, like your top seven cards in your library and put a creature from among them into play. So you get to like look at the top seven to see if you find Agent of Treachery to put into play. But then you trigger Sunbird's Invocation to look again, look at the next seven cards also, and cast any card that costs seven or less. So you could get like double Agent of Treachery. Or, you know, other cool things. Hey, don't 
Don't start any fires without me. Oh, they're so cute. Charger says, don't start any fires without me. How about you could just, you can take off that, is that a, is that a prepositional phrase? I don't know. You can take out that without me clause and just say don't start any fires. I am not happy right now. Poor spellbreaker. All right, so I could either get our golden goose in play or get Phoenix in play. We'll go Phoenix. I like dropping Guardian and then fighting. So I want to kind of save Coil because if they have Chandra Spitfire, that could be a huge problem. Ugh. All right, looks like I'm gonna have to Coil this War Boss. Yeah, because I can't just take, I can't just sit back and take two each turn. I am perfectly fine with them Lightning Striking Spellbreaker, because then that's you know them not Lightning Striking me. I mean, I guess I. All right, I guess we can take another two. I want to attack with my defender again. Oh gosh, is that lethal? Anyone need a fire started? Four, no. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So Puts us down to two. Yeah, if they would attack out, we would go to two. They didn't attack out, though. So we're going to four. My guess is it's just lethal anyway. They block Golden Guardian, take 12. So if I, cause, so I'm not going to cast Coil, because if I cast Coil, my opponent probably concedes. And so I'd rather attack so we can get, I want to get this in here, attack in. Yeah, we got our defender attacking. Attacking with defenders. This is so 2019. You're blocking the defender? Okay. I guess you're allowed to do that. <laughs> oh, attacking with defenders for the 5 0. Where's our. We need to get our hype music here for this 5 0. Five O Golden Guardian Gruel. <laughs> this is the content we come here for. That's what we got. Golden Guardian Gruel. And Gold Forge Garrison. Gruel five O. This is such a cool card. We had the the good combo with the Ripjaw Raptor. You know, make our four fours draw cards with Kiora. 
We didn't really get to do that, but yeah, we flipped this garrison over against the control deck, and they were just like, well, I'm dead. Can't deal with a 4-4 every single turn. And we're like, that's correct, you can't. All right, so pretty awesome league here. Awesome deck, a lot of fun. So there we go. This is what Throwback Thursday, Wednesday edition, is all about. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube later on and you liked this, uh, make sure you check out the, the playlist on the YouTube channel there where we got all of the Throwback Thursday decks. We've built around so many cool cards now. You know, we've, we've probably done like 30 of these or so. Um, you know, our two for today, of course, are the Boneyard Parlay and Journey to Eternity besides the Golden Guardian here. But we've had a lot of other cool ones too. So if you're watching here in chat, make sure you... Um, yeah, if you, haven't, if you haven't really seen these Throwback Thursday decks, check them out there on the YouTube channel. There's a playlist of Throwback Thursdays. So many cool cards that we've built around. Um, but there we go. That's, that's Gruel Guardian. So again, uh, also, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons over there. I'd appreciate both those. And leave some comments. I always like seeing those comments as well. Uh, but there we go. Thank you so much for watching Gruel Guardian, and I'll see you for the next video.